Welcome to the Wine Guy. Introduction to wine tasting. This is lesson nine. Flavours on the palate. So we've looked at uh, the wine, we've done the nosing of the wine, and we talked about the aromas that you get for white wines and the aromas you get for red wines as well. And we checked out the chart as well. Now, for the palate, it's similar again, and it's important to be confident to link the two together. Do you get the same experience that you get from the nose on the palate? But then also linking all the other characters that we've gone through sweetness, acidity, tannin, and alcohol as well, because they can shape the flavours. Okay, the same thing again. Now, what we always urge you to do is taste the wine and try and do the sweetness all the way through to the alcohol, uh, and then have another taste, this time for the flavours. So we get around the palate again, knowing all the other things we've done before, acidity, we've got all of those things in place, we've understood those, and then we have another taste. Mm. And now we start to link it. So was it like the nose? Are we still experiencing these like peach and stone fruit? Has the acidity changed it on the palate? And that's one of the most important things because for me, this one's got a lot more acidity, and you detect acidity, remember, on the palate. We've looked into that, but you can't pick it up on the nose. So this has got a lot of acidity, whereas on the nose it was peachy and rich. On the palate it's much more limey and zesty, and the acidity has changed it. There's a little bit of sweetness as well on the tip of your tongue, so that for me has changed the flavours in terms of honey. You've got a little hint of honey blossom on this style. But remember, we stick for white wines to the same fruits, green, citrus, stone, and also uh, tropical fruits. Uh, for red wines, remember, uh, for the red wines, we still look at uh, red fruits, black fruits, and things like dried fruits as well. But for both categories, there may be oak, there may be soil characteristics, earthiness, minerally aged characters, yeast characters, vegetal, and lots of other things. Whatever you pick out, don't be scared. Just shout out, and shout out loud as well. If you're at home, fine. Your neighbours might think you're weird. But in a tasting, shout it out and have confidence. Okay, so where are we picking up these flavours? Um, all of the fruit flavours, the last little thing we look at here, we've done sweetness, we've done acidity, tannin and alcohol. Fruits we kind of get in the middle of your palate, the middle of your tongue. But you can link it to the side in terms of acidity. So you might get zesty, limey characters there if it's a white wine. You might get more sour red cherry if it's a red wine. But mainly in the middle. So the fruit mainly experienced in the middle of the palate. Okay, so let me pop that down. That's the last thing we talk about. And a wine that you're writing down an little essay on. You're putting red fruits and vegetal and oak and all these different things. That's a complex wine. That's a wine that tells a story. It tells a lot of character. So that's a good wine. If you're struggling a little bit and you've got just a couple of things there, that's a much lighter, delicate wine. Maybe for more session drinking or quaffing as the wine world likes to call it. So that is our lesson nine. Join us for the last one when we talk about the conclusion of wine, which is the length and the quality of the wine. Until then, please subscribe.